Welcome to Voice of Soy, a content partnership with the Ohio Soybean Council on Brownfield. I'm anchor reporter Megan Grebner. Today, we're going to get into talking a little bit about research and e-fields. With us is Tom Fontana with the Ohio Soybean Council, Elizabeth Hawkins with Ohio State University, and Ohio soybean farmer Todd Hesterman. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello. Megan. I am excited to talk about research. I get a little nerded out on some of the science and the data that comes from it. Uh, Tom, let's start first with you and talk to me about why it's important that the Ohio Soybean Council work in a collaborative effort with researchers like Elizabeth at Ohio State University for your state soybean farmers. I'd be happy to, Megan. Uh, The Ohio Soybean Council has been investing uh, checkoff dollars, Ohio farmers checkoff dollars at the Ohio State University for uh, probably approaching 30 years now. And we're really proud of the collaboration we have with a wide variety of researchers, researchers at the university. And we do sponsor research on a wide variety of areas that are important to Ohio soybean farmers. It's a great partnership. Uh, We work really closely with uh, uh, the researchers there in a wide variety of areas from plant pathology to engineering to entomology, um, agronomic practices, breeding, and so forth. And Uh, One of the important areas, our farmers uh, certainly recently have become more and more interested in soil health. And uh, one of the folks that has been helping us in that regard is with us today, Elizabeth Hawkins. And uh, I think she'll be able to uh, talk about some of the research that we've sponsored in that area, as well as a really, really robust program that Ohio State has developed over the last four or five years called eFields. Both are very important to our Ohio farmers, and we're happy to invest money in research that uh, shows up in, in the eFields report. And we're going to talk a lot about soil health and e-fields coming up. Todd, I want to talk to you in in terms of uh, being an Ohio soybean farmer and knowing that your checkoff dollars are being invested in this type of research. Why is this important and what do you take from it? Well, uh, to me, it's a great way for for Ohio farmers to to parlay some of their funds and some, some of the questions they have and do it as a, as a common goal among all farmers in Ohio that raise soybeans. Um, it makes it a great collaborative and you can make your dollars go so much further uh, just because of the, the amount of funding that we can generate uh, to use in a bigger picture. Um, you know, if we tried, if I tried to do this on my own, it would take me years and years and it, it's, it would be a struggle um, by using the check. Off, I think it's a great way to, to leverage our, our grain dollars to, to promote research and help all soybean farmers. Elizabeth, you kind of get to be uh, the belle of the ball today and our star of the show. We're going to talk first uh, about e-fields on farm research and basically the connection between science and uh, the field. So tell me a little bit about uh, what we can find uh, on e-fields, and then we can talk about some of that research. Yeah, absolutely, Megan. So here at Ohio State, we were hearing from farmers like Todd that being able to experiment and translate the research going on at the university to the farm level was really important. And so e-fields was born from that idea that we could engage farmers in the research process So we've put together a program where farmers can engage with us. The questions that we're asking are farmer driven, and we can ask those questions in such a way that that experimentation, that research can be conducted on farm in a field scale situation using the equipment that farmers are using. So we can test different practices and see how they impact yield and profitability on individual farms. Um, We then turn that information around and publish it in an annual report So not only the farmers who are working with us can benefit from that research that we're conducting. Um, We're in our 
sixth year now. The fifth anniversary report is out. So if you want to check it out, um, we've had over 500 trials over the last five years, looking at everything from soybean seeding rate to fungicide. Um, we do both corn and soybean as well as small grains um, and even some work with cover crops. So whatever question you have, there's a good chance that there's some research that's been conducted on farm covered in those past reports. And if there's not, we always want to hear from farmers what you want to know so that we can move our research in that direction and answer those questions that matter. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of it being like the equipment that farmers are using or to tie, replicate some of uh, the, the practices that they use on their farm to be able to drive research and find answers and have data-driven answers for their questions. Yeah, it's incredibly important. We know that every farm and every field is unique. And so something that we see in research in a small plot situation may behave differently in a real farm setting because of the way that it interacts with different practices or the environment, even something down to as minor as the you know, hybrid or variety that you're planting or your herbicide program. So being able to see how different practices work in that system on the farm is incredibly important to making sure that we can fine tune it to work for each individual producer. This isn't short reading material, <laughs> is it? It's what, uh, the 2021 reports over 300 pages of research data that's been compiled and put together. Talk to me a little bit about um, kind of this emphasis on soil health and how that's been driving some of the research and what uh, you guys have been doing? Yeah, absolutely. We've been incredibly grateful to have a partnership with Ohio Soybean Council to receive checkoff dollars to drive research in the area of soil health, which was an area that a group of farmers came specifically to us and said, hey, there's a lot of buzz in this area, but not a lot of good information that we can use to make decisions on how to measure soil health on our farm and know if the practices we're doing are making a difference in a positive direction. So working with Ohio Soybean Council, we've put together a, pro a project that offers sampling in fields. And we're looking at some of these newer soil sampling techniques that are coming out. So specifically things like POC-C, which is an active carbon measurement, respiration, and aggregate stability are some that we honed in on. And we were able to sample over the last two years about 500 fields and start to understand all across Ohio, what differences do we see, not only you know, from our starting points like soil type, you know, CEC, those sorts of things, but how do the different management practices that have been used on farms over the last 10, 15, 20, even 50 years, how has that changed where those soil health values are starting out in some of these fields? So we're specifically looking at the differences between fields, for example, that have been in continuous no-till for a long time and comparing it to fields that have had conventional tillage. And then some of the more new practices like cover crops. Todd, when you look at this type of data and this research guide, for example, what do you pull from it? What is the most important thing that you can take from this research and this data? The, what, I, what I get from it, um, I've done some soil health sampling over the past few years and on my farm, we're continuous no-till, and really my only checkpoint would be uh, a, a uh, filter strip or a fence row that I can take a sample there and then take one from our uh, cropping fields and compare those two numbers. What eFields does is gives us a chance to calibrate uh, these soil health indicators across a wider region and Let's, let's us have a vision into what conventional tillage can do to so, for soil health versus continuous no-till. Uh, it can kind of either help reaffirm what you're doing or show you weaknesses in what you're doing, and you can calibrate it to your system. When you look, Elizabeth, at the future of agriculture and kind of how things are, are, are going, we're talking more about carbon. We're talking more about regener regenerative farming practices. How does that come into play as you start outlining some of those field trials and some of those research uh, ideas as maybe not necessarily for 2022, but as you think about 2023 and beyond? 
I think the interesting thing is, you know, we have a lot of interest in these soil health areas, regenerative farming, and we're starting to learn how the practices that we've used in the past have impacted how we've gotten to where we are now. But with technology and some of the new things that are coming out, we're starting to better understand. We have an opportunity to better understand how some of these new technologies can accelerate our improvement in those areas. So I think when we have projects like what we're doing with Ohio Soybean Council, it allows us to set the baseline and get a protocol in place that we can very quickly measure progress from here on out. So I think that's really the most exciting thing is maybe we can learn how reduced compaction from using drones in the field might be able to help with our soil health in the next few years. And probably even some exciting technologies that I can't even think of will be able to very quickly understand what's the value on farm and accelerate adoption in areas and in technologies that are going to give us the most bang for the buck on farm. Elizabeth, when we look at these, are there also field demonstrations or where these research trials are, are being held on full fields, uh, ability for farmers to see them in action before you uh, compile all of the data into the research guide? Um, there's some opportunity. Obviously, something like Farm Science Review is going to give you the ability to come out and see on a small scale some demonstrations of the most exciting trials that are featured in e-fields. Um, but the team is always interested in hearing from you. Feel free to reach out if there's something you're interested in. I think that's the nice thing about e-fields is that we're trying to build a community where farmers can communicate with each other. So if there's something you're specifically interested in, we can make the connections to help get you some experience in that area, get you some advice. And if we have a lot of interest in an area, we've been known to put together small listening sessions or groups where we can get some peer-to-peer -peer discussion, which I think is much more valuable than you know, reading about it in the report. Todd, how much do you rely on your other uh, farmers, whether they're other directors or other farmers in your area when you're looking at practices or questions and some of the things you're looking ahead to to implement on your farm as well? Well, it, it's a valuable resource and uh, we get together periodically and, and shoot ideas off of each other and and uh, some of them are contributors to the e-fields too. Uh, that have their own plots and uh, it's invaluable to, to to throw competition out of the mix and get down to what we're really all trying to do and that's to to make our soils and our farms better than when we received them um, for the future and for the next generation uh, to me that's where all this collaboration really shines Tom, as you look at what uh, eFields does and the farmer directors and your other farmers throughout the state of Ohio, how important, and, and talk about the role that Ohio Soybean Council plays in uh, facilitating that, that, that community or uh, development of, of research and, and support of research uh, for the future of Ohio soybean farmers. Well, there are a number of things that we support. Um, uh, we do support uh, OSU Extension uh, to get out there and do field days and sponsor events where farmers can get together and learn about the research. We also have a program called Field Leader that uh, provides information primarily on Ohio State research projects because that's who we uh, fund our projects with and to get information out there, videos and uh, articles and information on all the research uh, that we're doing uh, around the state. I think what's really interesting about eFields, and I know it's 300 pages long, but the particular uh, trials or work that's done there it's a couple pages i mean in specific areas and in specific uh research that's done uh all the information is in like two to four pages so it's really easy for a farmer say he wants to look at manure or seeding rate or whatever uh, it's very compact and, and the information is easy to uh, understand. 
So they don't have to read all 300 pages. They can just go to what's important to them and find out the information really easily. So, Elizabeth, any other parts of uh, your e-fields that you want to, any other research projects you want to highlight and, and point out for farmers to check out? I think one thing I want to highlight is we've talked a lot about the size of the report. And over the last few years, we never predicted how successful we were going to be at finding farmers who wanted to do research. Um, you know, I really enjoyed the opportunity to work with farmers and it's exciting how many want to test things on their farm. But as a result, the book has grown quite large. So we're in the process of creating an online database where you can go in and look through all the different research trials across all the years and hone in on exactly what you're interested in. So that's available online. You can select um, the management practices that fit your farm as well as the trial types and just get the results from those trials and not have to sort it through five years of 300 page reports. Um, so that's really exciting and uh, makes it more accessible to farmers, hopefully. And we hope that's something you guys will enjoy using. Uh, so that's, I think, the most exciting thing to share. There's plenty of research. <laughs> there is definitely uh, not a shortage of uh, research and information available and a tool that that really can help promote successful uh, soybean farming and practices uh, throughout the, the state. Uh, anything else anybody wants to add today, Todd? Any uh, maybe a, a last um some closing comments about your support of uh, checkoff dollars and why checkoff dollars are used for this type of research. Yeah, I since being involved, uh, it's very simple to me that our checkoff dollars is is bringing far more back to the farmer than what we're spending in checkoff. Um, the returns to the research and the and the products we've looked at and and. Uh, uh, development of new uses has more than paid for our checkoff uh, funds that we give. Um, so, if any if any farmer second guesses what their checkoff is doing for them, be rest assured uh, we're getting our money's worth. Uh, so it's it's very very worthwhile, very rewarding uh, to see what the checkoff is all provided. Um, e fields is a great example. Um, the, the nice thing about e-fields is a, a something you might have interest in. You can look it up like a soybean seeding rate, and it usually tells you where the plot was located. And in, in return, you can make those connections to the person that actually did the plot, the farmer that actually did it, and talk directly to them if you can get the connections made. But it also gives it some regionality. Does it fit my area compared to Southern Ohio or Eastern Ohio or something along that line? Tom, anything else? Just want to say we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about these things. And we really appreciate the folks at uh, the Ohio State University like Elizabeth, who are doing good work on our farmer's behalf and, uh, uh, we really appreciate their work and the information they get out to uh, all those soybean farmers in Ohio that pay into the checkoff. So uh, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Elizabeth, before we let you go, we've talked a lot about uh, being able to find the digital resource online. Where do farmers need to go uh, to check out the eFields on farm research? The link is easy to remember. It's efields.osu.edu. Thank you all so much. Uh, I can't wait to dig in and, and see some of the research trials that you guys have been putting together. Thank you. Yep, thank you. I'm Megan Grebner with Voice of Soy, a content partnership with the Ohio Sweeping Council on Brownfield.